This is Shooting USA, reporting the stories from America's shooting scene. Jerry Mitchlack travels the world shooting and competing, but during his career, Jerry says there is one thing he's always wanted to do, hunt giant Canada geese. Well, we thought that could be interesting, so Mike Irvine set up a Kansas goose hunt for the entire Mitchlack family. Late season birds are really tough, so I had to go with my most trusted hunters for this trip. The birds are really tough this time of year. You know, they've been hunted from Canada all the way down to, a lot of these birds have been as far as, uh, oh, Texas and Oklahoma. The scout is my one of my absolute favorite parts of this. This is the opportunity to see the birds you're going to hunt the day before. You know, they change what they feed depending on the temperature. And so it just takes a lot of uh, mileage in the trucks, burning a lot of fuel, making a lot of phone calls. There is a lot of them down in there. Hopefully they'll be the back in the morning because it looks good from here. But I haven't seen birds in a long time like this, so I'm pretty excited, pretty excited. Being that, this close to them and knowing the next morning we're gonna be laying amongst them, that was, that was good stuff. I knew I was ready to get up at two o'clock in the morning and go out there and play and uh, have a good time with, with these geese, so it was just pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, we got some snow coming in tomorrow, so they should be out feeding. Late season fun. Yeah. Snow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't tell me, you didn't say nothing about snow on the phone. <laughs> Kay wasn't ready to get out of the car just yet. She was looking pretty cold, and it, it was. We're used to Louisiana weather, guys. We've got so many layers tomorrow, we're gonna look like the abominable you know, snowman. We're gonna have so many clothes on. We're, go we're gonna be warm. Fortunately, I had gotten my hands on some heated clothing. EXO2, the heat inside, they make these battery-powered foot soles and back wraps. I was wearing a vest, and when you take Cajuns to Kansas in February, you're gonna need all the help to stay warm you can get. It was important on this trip for Jerry and Kay and Lena to get the whole perspective. It's not just about hunting, it's about the work that goes into it, and that means getting up at 5 a.m. to put decoys out in the snow. And y'all are bringing out these bags of decoys, you got a trailer full of decoys. I knew from right there that these birds are going to be hard to call. It's not going the way I had intended. Uh, it was starting to turn into one of those days where it felt like the geese knew we were there. We talked about the birds are just changing a lot. The weather's changing, the conditions are changing, um, and the birds are changing a lot because of that. Nothing is going right. I can see it on Jerry's face. I am, uh, I'm starting to feel like a very lonely man for dragging them halfway across the country for this. I was ribbing Mike a little bit about having any friends. He, give, he calls them friends till he brings them on these hunts and they don't shoot anything, so they leave him. But I'm not that kind of guy. You know, Mike was uh, working his heart out, calling really well. I was really impressed with the way you guys were working the birds. When you see one plan isn't working, you have to change the plan, so a lot of thought goes into it and a lot of, a lot of sweat, a lot of muscles to get everything out here on the water. Well, I was thinking this is a really good place to take a nap, and I did that a couple of times. <laughs> They didn't want to be in the corn early. They were coming up off the water. They were circling. They just wanted to get up and stretch their wings a bit. And we're trying to get them down into a place they didn't want to be yet. There comes a point when you just got to phone it in. It's just not going to work. So we're getting out of the field. The one thing that we are able to take away from this is that the geese really don't want to come off the river. So the only thing we can do is get in the John boats and go out to a river island and give it a shot in the afternoon. So when I saw all them birds on the water, I knew it was just a matter of we getting in position and we were gonna get some good birds out of that out of that river. We took our collars and we backed them off. We left our shooters up front so it's fewer people to hide. And we were able to call and move around and look and see what was going on. <laughs> When they came, they came all at once. Big bunches, little bunches, twos, threes. Lena even smacked a big mature blue goose. I wasn't expecting that, that was cool. When they say these people can shoot, they can shoot. I 
don't remember. All I remember was dad was yelling, shoot, so I stood up and I don't even remember pulling the trigger and it hit the water. <laughs> she went to the hotel room that night saying about how well she shot. She was pretty excited about it. So that was worth the whole trip to get her out here and uh, share some of this experience of shooting these geese, which is, to me is pretty, pretty exciting. Mike and Marty and myself were in the back and we were working together uh, mimicking the different sounds because we had large groups of birds. With the three of us back there, you could mimic some different sounds and create a realistic situation that uh, the birds seem to work very well to. How's it going now, Jerry? It's getting better, boss. <laughs> we got about four or five on the water right quick. That's good stuff. I wasn't feeling so lonely now. I could look at Jerry and he was starting to have fun. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right there, buddy. Yeah. We got wet and cold and windblown and everything else, but the last hour of the day was pretty wild. We had a lot of big groups coming out of the coming out of the fog right into us, and so we got got some shooting in. The group shot great. ShootingUSA.com, your resource for firearms news and information. The Mitchlacks all have some Cajun in their background, and they call Louisiana home. So you can imagine their reaction when they woke up to a whiteout snowstorm and frigid temperatures on that Kansas goose hunt. Well, we woke up at about 3.30. We got in the car, we've been driving, I've been sleeping, so it's been quite nice. but. For Jerry, it's probably not very fun. Uh, it was beautiful. Actually, I enjoyed the morning just because uh, to get to be out in the snow and, and never seen that much snow falling and those big old flakes. This field's nothing but grass, but you can't see it because there's four inches of snow just like that on it, and the snow just keeps coming. You're working a good mule into the ground. I do have to say that. Now I'm hot and sweaty, so when I lay in that little blind, I'm going to be cold and shivering, so <laughs> I'll get the full treatment today. It's, it's such a grand scale of operations to make it happen. It's a lot of work. You really have to know where you're going, what you have, and what you need. And it did impress me. I was compared to my son, who always used to play with his army men and lay out the battle plan and all that. And you, you guys attack this, attack this uh, goose hunt just about the same way. You, you uh, lay out your battle plan and then uh, put all your, your ducks out and maneuver everything around. It's gonna be good. We're gonna have some killing going on here just shortly, so I'm excited. Let's go guys. This is good stuff, man. You can see these, these birds from a long ways off and call them. These guys are calling really good. The birds are responding well. It's snowing. I'm out here having a, having a Yankee experience, man. This is really good stuff. And the way you and uh, Jeremy uh, blow these goose calls, pretty impressive. Of course, I don't know one from the other, but I, I'm figuring it out. That, that something, you, you know, a different call to make them turn and come back to you. And uh, then right. you seem to have different calls when there's just two as opposed to when there's a whole flock or you talk to them a little different. So that's interesting. After you hunt with some people long enough who are good on a call, you click. You see when the birds are working, you know what the next guy's going to do, and uh, you can really make a realistic atmosphere. I've got to hear a few of the geese out on the water listening, listening to them when they pass. So uh, starting to get some strategy there on how those, how those calls should sound. I really have no idea. What you're, t <laughs> what, what you're telling them, but uh, it, it seems to be working pretty good. To lay in these, in these layout blinds and have them come in on you like this, it was just totally different. They flapped the doors open and they were right there. It was, uh, it was pretty exciting. And they, they look huge. Uh, when those uh, geese come in with those wings opened up, they, they look huge. So, pretty fun to see them. You kind of think they're going to land on you. You're kind of hoping they'll land on you because then you'll, you know, you can't miss. You start to forget that you're really cold. Just to see them and you guys working them with the way you were with your calls, uh, it, was, it was good stuff. Especially how big these birds are. I'm used to shooting a mallet and you hold a mallet next to one of these Canadian, it's, 
it's no comparison. There is one guarantee with waterfowl hunting. If you get out and start messing with the decoys, you're gonna get busted by some birds. Yeah, it happened. This pair comes in out of the snow, and they're gonna do it. Splits to the side where Jerry and I are hunting. Believe it or not, in my brain, I think, I'm gonna pop this goose. And they laid out right in front of me. When you said shoot, I had my, I was, I was cheating a little bit. I had my hand on the pistol grip. Let's get this pair. Nice shooting, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was going to beat Jerry Mitchlack to a target. I was wrong. He doesn't get his, uh, his claim to fame as being fast on the trigger, and it goes the same goes for, for goose hunting or any other kind of hunting. <laughs> that was a shot, my friend. I beat you to the punch. That's my job. <laughs> Pair sliding in right off the front of the deck. They were so low when I saw them, I wasn't sure they were gonna make it. And I mean, they were barely clearing the grass. They're coming in really low. So they are a big target, and you wonder how in the world you can miss them, but I managed. But uh, uh, pretty exciting when they come in that close. The last three of the day were the highlight of the trip for me. They did everything perfectly. The K is laying on my right side. And I'm whispering to her, ready, ready. And when I threw, I think I didn't even tell her to shoot because I wanted to get all of them. <laughs> but anyway, I, I uh, came in on the lead bird and folded them up. And before I could shoot the other two, I think, I think Lena got both of them. I mean, you're up, so you might as well shoot both of them while you're there. You see uh, Jerry and Kay and Lena get up and just bring them down like they're supposed to. It's great to see all the pieces come together to get Lena out here and show her what I did as a kid. We did this, we duck hunted every day in the season when I was young. So to get her out here in the woods and let her experience what it takes to actually bring a bird home and what, what it, uh, all the effort involved, I think she's gonna really enjoy it later on. Mike knows how it is. We fight a lot of tough conditions throughout the course of the year and it doesn't always come together. So when it does, it makes it that much more special. Everybody should try it at least once, even if it's not your thing. Uh, uh, it's just the experience of seeing it done and how you guys do it, and y'all are obviously serious about it. Well, I've been hearing Irvine stories ever since that trip ended. It was a lot of work, but I think everybody involved truly had a great time. I know Jerry is already asking Mike when the next hunt will be, preferably without the blizzard. Oh, but here's something that helped with the cold. These are electric heated insoles from XO2 to keep your feet warm. They also have heated back wraps, vests, and neck gaiters. Jerry and his family spent most of the hunting trip wrapped in XO electric warmers. They run off rechargeable battery packs and last up to seven hours. Plenty of time for a full hunt. For the insoles, you trim the edges to fit your boots, and that guarantees warm feet. Yeah.